Hey everyone, in this video, we're going to be talking about how to accept user input in the C++ programming language. Accepting user input is a huge part of any coding language, as it allows our user to interact with our program that we're building. And through such, we can take the user's input and manipulate it in any way that we need. So let's talk about how we can accept user input and then practice using it with a few examples. To accept user input in C++, we use CIN, which stands for character in. We are accepting in a value from our user. Just one thing to quickly note, CIN is part of the standard namespace. So you either need to add using namespace std semicolon at the top of your code, or place std colon colon in front of all your CIN and COUTs in your code. So this CIN works in a similar way to COUT. We need to initialize a variable to store the user's input and just be careful about which data type you declare the variable as. And this will obviously depend on the type of information you want from your user. For example, if you want their age, an integer will do. If you want some very specific number, a float or double will do. Let's say that we want to know our user's name. Well, we're going to want a string variable for this purpose. So let's just declare and not initialize a string variable called name. We now want the user to initialize the variable. So we type C in and then two greater than signs. Just note that these greater than signs are the opposite direction to our typical C out ones, which are less than signs. I will make a video about what all this means in the future and we'll leave a link in the description below once it has been created. So in this first line here, we are declaring our string variable. And in the second line, we are allowing our user to initialize the variable. If we build this program, we can see that nothing happens. This is because our C++ compiler is waiting for us, the user, to enter something as a variable. So to make this more obvious and useful, let's add in another line that explicitly tells the user what we're looking for. Then we can add another line at the end that will print back the information using the user initialized variable. Great, so we just accepted and used user input for the first time. What do you think would happen if we declared a variable up here as a float or a double, and then gave an input in the form of a string? Well, as you can see here, when we build and run, then enter a string, we just receive a zero back. This is because C++ is expecting a number and we're not giving it one. Another common problem people run into when using user input for the very first time is if the user enters something with a space. So let's build and run our program again and enter study session as two words instead of one. You can see here that our print statement only shows study and not session. Well, why is this? C in will stop reading whenever it hits a white space, which is our space here. To avoid this problem, you can use the get line function and enter C in comma your variable name. This will read the whole line until the user hits enter, which is received as a backslash n by our C++ compiler. The enter applied by the user tells the getLine function to stop reading. We're going to talk about this and many more C++ functions in the future. So if you still don't fully understand, do not worry. Thank you for checking out this video and I hope it helped you learn how we can accept and use user input in C++. If you enjoyed, please like, subscribe, and consider checking out our Patreon page to support the channel. However, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns about the information I provided in this video, please leave a comment down below and I will do my best to address your concerns.